on but I went in and I said, hey, you got a few, any job openings? And they said, yes, we have a dorm. And I said, fine. <laughs> so that was one day. The next day I went down to Tip Top Taylor's and they uh, measured me up for a new uniform. And that, I wish I had kept the uniform instead of leaving it there. So it was built for me. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my theater, the Al Whittle Theater. <laughs> Not knowing what the, the town was, I was amazed. It, it was a booming town. It, it had four grocery stores, four gas stations, you had uh, ladies wearing anything that you wanted. It was in Wolfville, and the, the place for the Entertainment was the theater, because back then there were no lounges or anything in that line, so the theater was the main entertainment center for the town of Wolfram. In the film days, the, the film companies used to consider Wolfram a cosmopolitan. That's just how they, they labeled us, of course, it was the university and the clientele that said, you're cosmopolitan. So they would... Uh, have a picture that's opening up and they would phone from Toronto and say, do you have this date open? Because we want to open up this picture in your theater. Didn't bother me, I thought that's fine, you know, I'll keep, keep coming, I'll, I'll take them. I never had any problem with any students at all. They, they were super people to, to work with and they, their different organizations used to put on late shows on Friday nights to raise money for their their group. Oh, I think nothing would ever surpass the pajama game where you, if you came in your pajamas, that was free. We had 350 that night in the first show <laughs> in your pajamas. So the girls used to have their pajamas broke up so Miss, so the dean of women. We think they're just going out and underneath their clothes and jam so then when they got out of view from the residents, then they would unroll their, their pajama legs and there they were. <laughs> the film companies started wanting, well I suppose that they're their main distributors and that they wanted extra time. They, three or four days wasn't enough. You had to go into uh, Twin theaters. But if you opened up new, on first run, you had to run two weeks, regardless, because no one knew if it was going to be a success or not. But you had to run at least two weeks. And then on um, California would phone every night to see what your take was. Then they would take Friday, Saturday, and Sunday gross. And then determined, okay, you hold next week. Regardless if you had nobody, you, they would tell you you had to hold. Then we went into the third theater, and, and you could go, say, for two weeks or three weeks, you'd go from the large to the small to the little. And you, you were still playing it, and that satisfied them. Once in a while, if the show was terrible, and they always had smellies, and they always will have smellies. <laughs> we worked back and forth with the film companies, and I had very good uh, relations with them, because whenever they were in town, they always dropped by to see what we were doing, how we were doing. They, they we were just like one big family. That's the way I felt about it, anyway. Well, I, I thought, well, when the year 2000 came in, that a new century, so that's time for me to bow out. <laughs> so it, uh, it continued on until April. The, the show was over with. We had some wine and celebrated the old place, but it didn't uh, affect me until the next week when they started taking stuff out of her. That's when it really hit that my home was being destroyed. It was an interesting career. I wish that it was still going, but because I still miss it.